Log on to patreon.com forward slash Dane Calloway or paypal.me forward slash Dane Calloway to support me, my channel, and my content. Any amount is very much appreciated and I humbly thank you. By demand, merchandise is now available at I'm just here to make you think.com. I am documenting this because it is necessary. Our people need to know the absolute truth. And one of my previous documentaries, I covered a story about our indigenous ancestors that I noticed many of you were unfamiliar with. Even though it was very disturbing to write and talk about, I pushed through the chilling details and the many shedding tears from my face to present the untold truth about the Negro Wall Street. And so today, I'm going to share some correlating information in this vlog, further south from my last vlog, but it is just as important. For it was more than just Tulsa, Oklahoma that carried the name. So, Without further ado, join me on this continuous amazing journey as I strive to shed light onto the unconventional truth. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now I am in downtown Durham, North Carolina. Downtown Durham, North Carolina. Very, very, very historical landmark here, um, in which I'm going to tap into and a lot further detail, but I just want to show you guys, I'm probably going to have footage rolling of some things that I captured, video and photographs of some different type of landmarks that is here. Um, that is a reference to certain things that happened at this particular location. Uh, but coming back here, I'm going to let you know that this is the initial starting point where uh, indigenous aborigines began entrepreneurship okay now i know um, if you haven't already some of you have watched my documentary on the tulsa oklahoma um black wall street which was considered the negro wall street at that time but this one was the very first one they were inspired by what happened here and of course that one was called the black wall street but just to turn around so you can see that I am here, and I'm probably going to be reading this all so you guys can see it. I'm probably going to be putting a picture up or some video. I'm going to read this off, and I'm definitely going to be getting to uh, further detail uh, concerning this particular topic because this needs to be known. But keep in mind, like I said, everything that happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma was inspired by what happened here. <clears throat> Not the same thing happened as far as, you know, the burning it up and everything, tearing it down. Very, very sad story that happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, even though they have rebuilt it because of certain particular grants uh, that were given, in which I'm going to go into into a later documentary as well. They did get a chance to rebuild. Um, and this was torn down as well. As you can see, I'm probably going to be rolling footage that this looks totally different from how uh, it initially was, of course, during the time period, time rolls on. Um, but yeah, a lot of things have changed. A lot of buildings have changed, but a couple of different landmarks are still here. Uh, a couple of different banks are here. Now also, there's a uh, a lot of white people here a lot of white people here now um this was initially ours like all aborigine all indigenous aborigine of color of, like how you see of color with me we're all down here at one particular point but now it's uh <laughs> like everybody's here so uh, with that being said i'm just going to jump straight into it so i just want to quickly read off what this sign says and exact uh 
go over the exact details of what this sign actually means in full detail because I'm not too sure if this was told or not or if anybody knows this. Um, this is definitely a fact here that needs to be given as far as our history um, concerning the indigenous aborigines. Now on this particular sign, as you can see, this was going to say North Carolina. Hopefully you can see that North Carolina Office of Archives and History in 2004. So in 2004, this sign was um, initially put up. If there was one that happened before 2004, I'm probably going to put it up right now. Uh, but I can uh, tell you for a fact, minus the fact that it says African Americans, everything else is accurate. Uh, I'm going to read it off. In the early decades of the 1900s, Durham acquired national reputation for entrepreneurship businesses owned by African Americans lined Paris Street. Among them were NC Mutual Life Insurance Company, moved to Paris in 1906, led by John Merrick, Dr. Aaron Moore, and C.C. Spaulding, and Mechanics and Farmers Bank in 1907, led by R.B. Fitzgerald and W.G. Pearson. Now, directly above me, I'm probably going to walk forward so you can see what I'm talking about. If you could really look upward, directly behind me, you're going to see uh, the farmers right there. And it's still here. Everything else is really brand new to me. I can't recognize it from the pictures per se. So a lot of stuff has been changed. Um, definitely going to go into further detail about that. Well, Durham was a place where blacks were successful down through the years. It just happened that there were some people who got together and started some businesses and with the success that they had here, people came from everywhere just to see what was happening in Durham. W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington came to Durham and saw what was happening here and called it a mecca of black business. And the Black Wall Street name came from these efforts. And we had uh, guides at the North Carolina Mutual, tour guides at the Mechanics and Farmers Bank, at North Carolina Central University, and other places around town just to show what was happening here that was different from what was happening in other communities. The, the business leadership was very important. It made a tremendous contribution. And I, I can remember when I was looking for work and, and right out of college, there was there was a limited number of jobs that blacks could get other than waiters, elevator operators, maintenance people, and cooks. And uh, when we came to Durham, we found that there were blacks sitting at typewriters, handling money, uh, operating businesses, and doing many trade uh, jobs that were not common in most communities and this made a big impact upon the black community that caused us to become uh, famous here in Durham and one of the things that made us want to come to Durham to see what was happening and how it was happening and how we could carry it back to other communities and do the same thing. Okay ladies and gentlemen um, now I'm back in the truck um, because of the fact that uh, you're still going to be seeing me rolling footage of stuff that I gathered um, as I'm talking because there's a lot of different things that I want to cover um, that is not being put out there to the public that should be known and yeah it was getting crowded during that particular time period so I just kept the footage rolling and I just eliminated me talking during that particular part because there's too much too much noise going on over there I was directly off of the street Paris Street so um so yeah without further ado let me jump right into it what happened what happened why is there no longer Black Wall Street why is there no longer the mecca of entrepreneurship for our people? Why? Well, it's called Research Triangle Park. Research Triangle Park is the landmark uh, for large corporations, whereas Black Wall Street had well over 200 black owned businesses. Research Triangle Park has well over 200 large corporations, such as 
IBM, the technology giant, CDC, the Center of Disease Control, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, which is the global uh, medicine developer, uh, medicine, they create medicine, vaccines, uh, and other healthcare products. Ericsson's, which is they're the largest supplier for mobile systems in the world. USDA, USDA, of course, you are familiar with them dealing with food, but they also deal with nutrition and rural developments. And Fidelity, which is the banking guru. Now, that's just to name a few. I, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, Dane, why does that matter? I mean, they put research Triangle Park right there because it's the center of three universities, right? Now, let me answer that question by stating, according to this map <laughs> that I'm about to post right now, this is the map of Durham. Look at this map. It's clearly marked where you can see where the Negro or rather the colored people are. And you can also see where the whites, the white people are located, their homes and businesses. So with all that being said, what happened was Highway 147 was created. Highway 147 ran directly through 200 miles of color of colored people's homes and businesses. They did this under the guise of urban renewal. Urban renewal is used to displace people of color and increase segregation of color communities in order to destroy businesses and force people of color and force all of them into public housing and welfare. In other words, their real intent was to remove the independency and to eliminate self-sufficiency of thriving and prosperous people of color, native aborigines, us. That's why we're not there, okay? This also causes people of color to seek government assistance. Uh, you know, seeking to gain a balance. This hurts me to my soul stating this, okay? Because um, simultaneously, this also reestablishes white supremacy systematically, okay? See? This is what was used to remove the power of black businesses. This is what was used to remove Black Wall Street. Now, this may be one of the first places where this occurred, but I'm pretty sure if you take a look around your own neighborhood, you're gonna see some examples of urban renewal, okay? Also known as urban redevelopment. So, without further ado, you know what I gotta do. I'm gonna give out some shout outs to the people that's been supporting. Brother Ron Griffith donated $10 to me and he also left a note saying, thank you my brother for sharing truth. I wish I could give more, I hope it helps. It does help, Brother Griffith. I really appreciate that, thank you very much. I humbly appreciate that. Rudolph Bennett donated $25 and he also left a note and said, good presentation, bro, my contribution. Thank you, Brother Rudolph, I really appreciate that, thank you. All right, and the next person is Robin Williams, and he did, whoa, he donated $100, thank you, thank you, Mr. Williams. And he also left a note saying, I want to truly thank you for dedication and waking up our American people here in North America. Keep it up, brother. Wow. Thank you, Brother Williams. That is amazing. Thank you so much. That helps out a lot. Thank you so much. Damon Bonner, Bonner excuse me, donated $9. Thank you, Mr. Bonner. I really appreciate that. And he left a note saying, great work. Thank you, Mr. Bonner. 
David Manning donated $10 to me. Thank you, Mr. Manning. I really appreciate that. And he also left a note saying, just wanted to make sure this is the right person, but I can express, but I can express how you have impacted my life. Wow. I want to thank you and I hope millions more help. Wow. Wow, that is amazing, Mr. Manning. Thank you so much. I <sighs> Thank you so much. That is very humbling. Thank you so much. Deborah Sclafford. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Miss Deborah. I apologize if I didn't. Deborah Sclafford donated fifty dollars. Wow. Donated fifty dollars and she also left a note saying thank you for all your hard work and research. I truly appreciate you. And I truly appreciate you, Miss Deborah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Rena Williams, she donated $25. Thank you, Miss Williams. I really appreciate that. Mia Isaac, she donated $10. Thank you, Miss Isaac. I really appreciate that. Oh, and she also left a note saying, our strong alpha, much love. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Isaac. I really appreciate that. And the next person I'm going to shout out is Delisa Manuel for donating $50. Whoa. Donating $50. Thank you so much, Miss Delisa. And she also left a note saying, Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. The research you've done is greatly appreciated because it is extremely hard to find the information that has been hidden, twisted, distorted and or forgotten your videos have really been life-changing as far as giving me another point of view of the reality created by our oppressors I cannot explain how grateful I am and words cannot express how it feels to know my people have a more logical history than that of the romanticized slave ship journeys from a land no one in my family knows anything about Wow Wow. 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 That is major. That is major. Thank you, Miss Delisa. This is this is the reason why I'm doing this. This is Wow. 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 Thank you, Miss Lisa. I really appreciate that. That is very humbling. That is very humbling. Mm. I had to get myself back together. I apologize, y'all. Um, the next person I'm going to shout out is Breed Love Beauty Company. That's a business. And they sent $30 for donation. Thank you so much. Um, and they also left a note saying, love your channel. Shout out to Breland Love Beauty Company. Thank you so much. Jesse Sutton for donating $10. I hope I pronounced your last name right, Mr. Jesse. I apologize, Jesse Sutton. And, oh, and he left a note saying, hello, Dane. Hello. Keep up the great work. Peace and love from Brother Jesse. Thank you so much, Brother Jesse. I really appreciate that. All right. And the next person I want to shout out is Lakeisha. McKinley, Lakeisha McKinley. I apologize if I butchered the last name, but I think I got this one correct. Lakeisha has donated $10 to me. Thank you, Miss Lakeisha. All right, and the next person I'm going to shout out is Christopher Lee for donating $20. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I really appreciate that. Oh, uh, well, and he lost, also left a note saying, excellent documentary, Untold Truth About the African Slave Trade in America, the 1600s edition second half documentary thank you for revealing the truth they need that you guys if you guys have not seen that documentary go back and watch that mr lee thank you so much thank you so much that is it needs to be known it's very important very important it's anthony johnson anthony johnson has sent 50 dollars. thank you mr johnson that is humbly humbly appreciated uh and he also left a note saying keep Oh, great job. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnson. I humbly appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. All right. And the next people I want to shout out is definitely my Patreon people. Uh, my Patreon people has pledged to me 
and, and keeping me going as well. And I really appreciate that. And the first person I want to shout out is Nadine Alexandri. She pledged $5. Thank you, Miss Nadine. I really appreciate that. The next person I want to shout out is Obscene American for pledging $5 as well. Thank you very much for that. The next person I'm going to shout out is Ernest Fripp. Ernest Fripp, Fripp pledged $5. I hope I didn't butcher that. I really appreciate your uh, pledge of $5. Thank you very much. The next person is going to be Dorsey Amos. Dorsey Amos pledged $5 as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And Trey K has also pledged $5 as well. Thank you. Um, Christopher Jones has pledged $5 as well. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And the last person is going to be Allison Alexander, who pledged $20 to me. Thank you, Ms. Alexander. And to those people that have pledged $20 or more, you guys are definitely going to be seeing the uh, the full clips. Uh, well, no, no, not clips. You're seeing the full length documentaries before anybody else does, and even exclusive ones. And of course, my exclusive personal information, I'm pretty sure you guys are seeing that right now. I know I started posting that. Now you're seeing some background of me. I'm sharing that with you guys. And I really appreciate all the support guys for keeping this going, keeping this journey going, to showcase all of what was not told in our history books, all of what was not told by our parents, not knocking them at all, because they, of course, they have no idea because no one is really doing this type of work for them in the past or even now. So that is my main duty to bring it to you guys to let you know what's going on so you could be informative of for your own sake of what happened amongst us being indigenous aborigines within Turtle Island, a.k.a. North America. OK, and then I'll start traveling outside of North America to showing you. OK, we're, we're, we're going to go there as well. Yes, we are going to go there. I know this one is not as large as it usually is as far as the timing is concerned, but that's OK. I have way more stuff coming out, especially for this month, guys, Um, and be looking out for that. And I really appreciate all the support, even the ones that have it donated to me, but plan to do so. I really appreciate that. Even the ones that click like, comment and share. I really appreciate that as well, because that keeps this movement going, that keeps the movement going. That also lets everybody know um, the real deal, the real truth about what needs to be told as far as our history. OK, so with that being said, I'm going to end this right here. I'm Dane Calloway and I'm just here to make you think.